Yeah, so this is a bit of a blast from the past. So some time ago, one of my colleagues uh, made a comment about zinc being boring. And I thought we'd take that comment and examine it in a little bit more detail. And what I could show that was actually zinc is quite exciting because you can use it as a basis for what is basically a pocket flamethrower. <laughs> now, when we did this experiment, there was a beautiful yellow flame came out of this. But I'm told and I know from reading around that actually this flame should be blue. And we think that it's yellow because I did it with this syringe here, which has, we think, sodium contaminants that get into the flame and hence make it yellow. And we'd really like to see this blue color because this was the description of it the very first time this compound was made over 100 years ago. And so today we're gonna to try this with this syringe. Now this syringe is made out of plastic and the idea is that there shouldn't be any contamination from this in the flame. And together with some of the new very high speed cameras that we've got access to, we're hoping we can get a glimpse of this blue flash in the flame. This is diethyl zinc in this syringe. And as you can see, it looks harmless. Yeah, it looks, it could be water for all anyone would know. Okay, here we go. I'd say we got some blue. So up to about 900. Oh, here, here we go. go. Awesome. Yeah, you can yeah. see bits of blue. Well, we could see blue. So that's the most important thing. What are you doing now? I'm going to do it again. My passion for diethyl zinc comes from the, 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 the phrase we use is pyrophoric. Pyrophoric means it spontaneously catches fire in air. A bit Just of blue. a few drops. Yeah, you see when the oxygen exposure to the droplets is maximised, the blue colour is maximised. Yeah. And my guess is, as we see more and more material, it look whiter and whiter. Yes. Which it does. And you, of course, you see blue right on the yeah. edges. This compound was first discovered by Franklin. It describes in his original notes how he had a glass vial full of this compound, and he cut the top off and put a few drops of water in. And he says, at that point, I observed a, a, a spontaneous blue flame about a yard long. Um, in fact, actually, that's not true, because I've rerun Franklin's experiment. And what happens is that you generate a massive cloud of steam. So what I think happened is that Franklin bottled it. He put a couple of drops in, saw this huge quantity of white steam vapor coming out. And at that point, he just threw the flask away from him. And as you've seen, it's the contact with the air that generates the blue flame. So he's suddenly got a massive increase in surface area, I think, and that's what led to the, the, the beautiful blue flame. Now I think it's time for the control experiment where we go back to the original glass syringe and see if there's a genuine difference or not. Well, I never. Blue in that one as well. I'm a little surprised by that and I'm starting to wonder if the last time I did it I simply squirted it out too quickly because I think what we've definitely seen today is the slower you release this material out into the world the, the better the chance of seeing the blue. 
scientist in me thinks we need to do some more experiments, Brady. Come back, Zink! Come back! Perhaps a disco or something like that. So you can see that, again, a discharge, a high potential discharge is going across this tube. Which basically, your body can't metabolise copper properly. It's actually an inherited disease.